John 6, 51 through to 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. These are some ideas that are less accessible to us, to our own ears, uh, than they were in the days of Jesus. W one thought is the meaning of sacrifice. I mean, when the disciples and the earliest audiences heard a word like sacrifice, they took it for granted. This passage has an obvious link to the Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. You can't miss that. It's right from the beginning of the chapter, right to the end. It's as if it begins with some, you remember the breaking of the bread, that shape, and it ends with a reference uh, that clearly applies to that. The heart of discipleship is to receive him into our lives. And the language of John's gospel is down to earth. The whole passage is full of the language of sacrifice. Just look at verse 51. We're told quite clearly in verse 51 that feeding on Christ leads to eternal life. The one who gives himself, as we feed on him, we gain what he is. In verse 52, moving on to the next verse, then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves. They started to grumble about the, the, the things that divide. There are sharp divisions as to what this might have meant to his audience. Sacrifice is something that is a familiar thought to many of the people listening. And they started arguing, what does this mean? The very thought that it might mean that he was going to sacrifice himself for the, for the cause of the world, but more importantly from those who are listening, is a very difficult thought for some. But for others, it's a very uh, natural thought. And it's something that's very much in the teaching of Jesus. And the power of the use of one word is critical. Let me read verse 53. Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. Unless. Unless has that feeling of condition about it, doesn't it? It's a bit like uh, Thomas when you read, come to the end of John's uh, Gospel. He says, unless I put my hands and unless I see the marks. Unless. Unless has a condition that I think challenges us, uh, makes us consider very carefully what our response is going to be, unless you eat. So there is something very important. You eat and drink, you have to receive Christ into your life, into your heart, into the very person that you are. And then verses 53 to 55 sort of bring together the whole chapter which was spoken uh, in the, 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 the synagogue at Capernaum. Remember the importance of Capernaum, round Lake Galilee, spoken in the synagogue, these words. And the link is clearly found in these thoughts, the truth of what we find here in 53. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise them up at the last day. Has eternal life, not will have eternal life. So there is a present experience. When Martin Luther was talking about Holy Communion, one of the things that he said was that as we receive the elements, bread and wine, in communion, we make a manger so that Christ can come into our lives just as he came into the life of the world. So the link is very clear. An eternal life, it, it's a, a thought that's there also in the fifth chapter, that, that the one who believes, the one who receives, has eternal life. And it's that gift that's there for you. It's not a case of me on these shows week by week saying to you, it will happen, 
It is yours if only you would reach out and take hold of the power and life of Jesus Christ and embrace him in your living today.